Hello everyone. We are into a new lesson. Paul desire to visit Rome. We will find that even though Paul, as you study Paul, you will find that he desired to visit Rome. But the way Paul got to Rome was as a prisoner of the Roman Empire. So we need to study the word of God to find out a lot of things about Paul. In our introduction, we're going to bring words about Paul. Had to read the entire book of Romans to understand the book of Romans and to understand Paul. And studying Paul give us the understanding of the book of Romans and the other letters that he wrote. Now, we call it the book of Romans, but it is really the first letter in what we call the New Testament. And we're going to try to present it like God gave it to Paul and Paul gave it to us in his writings. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we again stand to deliver your word in the way that you left it and the way that you gave it. To add nothing to it, not to take away anything from it, because you have a damnation of a wolf on messing with your word. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to understand this and deliver it as you gave it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This lesson is called Paul Desire to Visit Rome. We know that Paul desired to visit Rome because he will tell us that in this letter that he wrote. To the church at Rome. Now Paul when he wrote this letter. Paul was in Corinth. Corinth Greece. That we call the book of Corinthians. And a lady by the name of Phoebe. Delivered that letter to the Roman church. For Paul. And in this letter Paul had said. I have a desire to visit you. And he did. But God had his own way and his own plan. For God, for Paul to get to Rome for a specific, specific reason. Let's look at uh, our introduction. And our introduction is going to be a word about Paul. Hopefully it will give us an understanding even greater of the book of Romans and other writings of Paul. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Notice now, Paul was the apostle. To the Gentiles, non Jew. And Peter was the apostle to the nation of Israel, the Jews. Two separate callings, two separate responsibilities. And this was sanctioned by God. This was sanctioned by God in Galatians chapter 2, verse 8. Sanctioned by God. The letter to the Roman church was written by Paul from Corinth. It was written by Paul from Corinth, and Corinth is Greece. During Paul's third missionary journey at Corinth, where he spent at least three months, that's where he was. He had just come from Ephesus when he wrote this letter. The letter to the Roman church was sent for the reason that Paul wanted to see and be with the church in Rome and wanted to let them know that he wanted to be with them in Rome and he will get there as soon as he could. The letter was taken to Rome. Listen to this now. The letter was taken to Rome by a deaconess by the name of Phoebe. A Phoebe was the deaconess that Paul gave the letter to to take it to the Roman church. And that was at a place called Sentia. And that's in Romans chapter 16, verse 1. It gives you that she did this. Okay? Paul had not visited Rome when he wrote this letter. Paul had never been to Rome when he wrote this letter. When we read this letter as the first book in the New Testament, it is not because Paul is in Rome. This is a letter that he sent to the Roman church. 
telling him that he desired to come. Paul had not visited Rome when he wrote the letter. No apostle had preceded Paul to Rome. No apostle had preceded Paul to Rome. The Roman church was largely a Gentile church. And Peter was not the apostle to the Gentiles. We get a lot of conflict of information by watching movies and television about Peter was running the church in Rome, but he was not. He was not a Gentile. Peter rejected Paul saying that the Gentile were called by God. He, did, he was not in charge of the church in Rome. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. Paul's method was not to follow another apostle. And he probably would not have gone to Rome if another apostle had preceded him. If another apostle had preceded Paul to Rome, based on what we're going to find out in his letter, he would not have gone to Rome. In Romans chapter 15, verse 20. Romans chapter 15, verse 20. Yea, so have I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named. Paul said, I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, that I, at least I should build upon another man's foundation. That's what Paul said. Paul is saying that if another apostle had been there, he probably would not go there because he would be building upon another man's foundation. And that's not his own law. In Romans chapter 15, verse 20. This indicates that Paul was the founder of the church of Rome, not Peter. Paul had visited Roman colonies, but not Rome. Paul had visited Roman colonies, not Rome. Paul knew Rome, though. He had not been there to the city. He knew Rome. Paul was a citizen of Rome. He knew Rome, even though he had not been there. And then we read in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, we read, But the Lord said unto Ananias, remember that was in Damascus? The Lord said unto Ananias in Damascus, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel, as Paul, unto me, to bear my name before the Gentile. He was told he is a chosen vessel. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. That's why he was called. God also said that I will show him how great things he must suffer for his name's sake. And Paul suffered. If you check the life of Paul, Paul was always on the run. Paul was always trying to avoid being captured because when he did not do what he was supposed to do, when he got to Damascus, there was always after him to bring him down. Paul identifies himself as a servant of Jesus Christ who belongs to Christ entirely. Not just portion of Paul. He said, I belong to Christ entirely, not to the world or anyone else. I belong to Christ. That's what Paul said. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. You see where Paul is making this declaration. No, you're not. You got to get, you got to really understand this. No, this was Paul talking. No, ye not. That your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. No, ye not. That your body is a temple of God. Of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. The Holy Ghost is of God. And you have not, and you are not your own. Once the Holy Ghost inhabit you, you are not your own. You belong to God. Paul says, I belong to him in his entirety because I have the Holy Ghost. For you are bought with Christ. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is God's. Your body and your spirit, 
belonged to God. Paul was divinely selected and appointed to be an apostle for a specific purpose. For a specific purpose. He was set apart from others for his divine mission. He was set apart for his divine mission. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. Paul, Paul, by his grace, after he was separated from his mother's womb, God called Paul by his grace after he was separated from his mother's womb. Paul was separated unto the gospel of God. The gospel of God is the gospel of peace, the gospel of salvation. In Romans chapter 10, verse 15, Paul says, that the gospel of God is the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings, glad tidings, news, reports, and information of good things. The gospel of Jesus Christ is under salvation. That's the good thing. And Paul was called to do this. When Paul was called in Damascus, he had to go into the desert, say there were a period of three years. And there God, in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, revealed Paul things that he did not reveal to anyone else who had been walking with him for three years. So he was selected by Christ, by God personally, for what he's doing, for a specific mission. He was supposed to come to the Gentiles. Without the Gentiles being called by Paul, where would we be? I don't know. Remember when Paul met Peter in Rome, they wanted to say, no, they're not being called. So what did God do? Paul, was deal God was dealing with a man called Cornelius, a Gentile. And he told Cornelius, and when he was praying about the third hour of the day, to send to Joppa. And you'll find a man whose surname is Peter, Simon, whose surname is Peter, tell him to come. And at the same time, God told Peter on the rooftop, three men going to be at your door. Follow them. Can you hear They got to where Simon was, Simon Peter. He followed them to the home of Cornelius, Cornelius. And when he got to the home of Cornelius, what happened? The Holy Ghost, after Peter preached the message, notice this, he preached a message only to Cornelius to confirm that God was now entering to the Gentile realm. And Peter was the one who said, they were accepted just like we, but he still rejected them. How do we reject them? When Paul and Peter was in the same place one time in Rome, in Roman soldiers, Paul, Peter was sitting at the table with some Gentiles, and when Pete, Paul and some brothers walked into where Peter was eating, Peter looked around and saw Paul coming, and what did he do? He tried to slip away. Before Paul and the brethren saw him, Paul saw him. And when Paul called him down, Paul rebuked Peter to his face, being a hypocrite. Sit with him, but you will not accept him. So you see how God used? God uses things the way he plans it. So now we're going to find, and now we get an understanding, a little bit of understanding of Paul. And we have to get a great deal of understanding to put all the Paul did to the churches to understand Paul's mission. Amen? Look at verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. I thank my God. You notice when Jesus, Peter said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Father, in the name of Jesus. Now notice what Paul said here. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. For you all. See, we got to know how to pray. We got to know how to get to God. And the only way to get to God is through his son, Jesus. Without going through Jesus, you don't get to God. Yet, prove your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. 
Your faith is spoken up throughout the whole world. Let's look at that now. See, you got, you got to understand another thing. Paul had been traveling to the Roman colonies. And when he was talking about the whole world, the Romans controlled a great deal of the world at that time. So his verse is explaining what is meant by understanding Paul. Paul first addressed the church, the spiritual church, not the natural church. Thanking God. Thanking God through Jesus Christ. You have to thank God through his son. If you don't thank him through his son, you have no bearing on God's ears. See, God is a spirit, and God cannot deal with the flesh. So Jesus was in flesh. He died, went back to heaven. So you have to thank God through his son. You need to, we need to understand a whole lot about the Bible. For all that have stood in the faith, he thanked God for all of them that have stood in the faith, and they have been spoken of throughout the Roman Empire. You read that in Luke chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. The world was the Roman Empire as it was known to be then. It was the Roman Empire. It was not the world as we know it today. The world was considered the Roman Empire. So we need to understand that part in order to understand what Paul is saying. Let's look at verse 9 and 10. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. You remember how you always read, you must serve God in spirit and in truth? Notice what Paul says here before we move on. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. Two on that. In the gospel of his son, he served God in his spirit with the gospel of his son. Now, he is trying to let us know that we got to understand what the gospel is if we're going to serve God through our spirit with the gospel. Paul said you got to use them both to serve God. This is right here in the, in the book, in the Bible. This is not something that's being made up. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. In verse 10, make a request if by any reason, not at least, I might have a prosperous journey. He's not talking about money now. Cross the journey by the will of God to come to you. Paul tells the church that God is his witness. God should all be our witness. The Bible said our life is our witness, not our mouth. If we want to witness for God, it got to be done through our life. Whom he served with his spirit. Whom he served with his spirit in the gospel of his son. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of his son. Paul is telling the church how to serve God. He's telling the church, the spiritual church, not the natural church, how to serve God. We got to pay attention to that. The church served God with the spirit. In the gospel of Christ. In the gospel of Jesus. The church shares God with the spirit. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how the church serves God. Uh, all this other stuff. If it ain't here. You ain't serving God. Now this isn't the Bible. This is not Brother Kennedy. Or anyone else. Paul tells the church that. He prays for them. In his prayers always. Paul also tells them he prays for his prosperous journey by the will of God to come to Rome. He prays for a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to Rome. The church Paul is speaking of is a community of believers. 
The church is a community of believers and not a building made with hands. The community of believers are people who believe in Christ. The fleshly or natural church cannot serve God in spirit and in truth. The natural church, the fleshly church, cannot serve God in spirit and in truth, building on what Paul just said. Building on what Paul just said. The prosperous journey that Paul is making reference to is a successful and safe journey, not by ref making references to personal gain. Safe journey. Successful journey. And not by personal gain. If we don't understand, we're going to throw prosperity gospel in here. There ain't no prosperity gospel in here. He want a successful and safe journey. That's the prosperous journey he's referring to. Okay? Verse 11 and 12. Well, I long to see you. See, so just to let you know that this is in a letter. And he's still away. And he's sending his desire in the letter. For well, I long to see you that I might impart on you. See, there's a reason I want to see you. We're going to find that out. That I might impart you some spiritual gifts. To the end, you may be established. That is that I may be confident together with you. By the mutual faith that we have in each other. Now, here's what he's saying. Paul state his reason for longing to see the church. So you gotta understand Paul and understand what his letters are about to all the churches or any of the churches that he writes. Paul said his reason for coming to the church in Rome. Paul had the fullness of God. Romans chapter 15, verse 29. Paul had the fullness of God in him and could impart gifts on the church that would strengthen them. See, he wanted to impart gifts on the church that they may be strengthened in their weaknesses. And he knew it was needed. So he wanted to come and impart this gift of strength on them. Paul says also that he might be blessed with them by their mutual faith. You know, to be blessed in a community of believers, we should have mutual faith to be blessed. If we don't have mutual faith to be blessed, we're away from what God desires. We get blessed by having a mutual faith. And we're talking about the body of believers, the church, not the natural, the spiritual. We need to understand that because the word of God is clear, it's concise, and it does not give any wicked room to make up your own message. You got to use God's message. We can look at verse 13. Now I would not have you inward, brethren. That oftentimes, I propose to come unto you. See, he, he can tell them something right now. But, was let hitherto, hit that I might have some that among you, even as among the Gentiles. Now, he, he wanted to do something here. Paul said that he would not have come to the church having an ignorant that he wanted to come to the church many times. Paul is telling them that he wanted to come to the church many times. Then he said something else here. He did not come because he wanted to have some fruit, some converts when he came among them, even as other Gentiles when he came. See, when Paul went to the various other churches in the Roman Empire, there were converts among them that strengthened Paul's gospel, talking about the master. And Paul is saying, 
I could have come, maybe you should have come, but I didn't have any converts. But now, I'm coming. Now, but notice what happened here. This was Paul's desire. Paul did not go to Rome when he chose to go. He did not say, I'm going to Rome today. Paul was a prisoner of the Rome. He was placed on a ship. And the ship crashed. Paul was on an island. He was bitten by a viper. The viper didn't kill him. And others, when they saw this happen, Paul was able to deliver the gospel to these men that were in this crash of the ship. And after a while there, when everything smoothed over, Paul was placed on this another ship by his captors, the Roman soldiers, and sailed on to Rome. That's how he got there. That's how he got there. He was taken as a prisoner on a ship. And we need to keep it where it is, not where we want it to be. One of the things that, when I was studying this, this lesson, it kept bumping into me. The heart is deceitful. A desire to turn you away from the things and understanding of God. And many times in studying and preparing this lesson, the heart is deceitfully wicked. My heart attacks, trying to deceive the way God wanted me to deliver this message. But by and by, the spirit within me won the battle. And that's why I'm standing here today, teaching it as God allowed me to understand it and allow me to know it. And we need to get to understand it. Get what God wants, not what we want. Get away from that deceitful heart. Because it's definitely wicked and it will deceive you as it was trying to deceive me. I'm my heart. Maybe you can bypass without deception, but I had to battle. There's a war between the flesh and the spirit. And I was having a war. But the spirit and sin inside me won the war. Amen. Verse 13. Did I do 13? Yeah, let me read. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 he wanted them to know that he wanted them to come. Okay, we're going to 14 now. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Verse 15. So as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at the room also. That's a mouthful. Paul said in Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, listen to this. Teachers, preachers, anybody else who's handling the word of God. And this is where I, I encountered the deception of my heart that God took me over and brought me through. I preached the gospel. Then he said, it's laid upon me. And woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe is judgment. Paul said, woe is me. If I preach not the gospel, war is judgment. It's judgment. Judgment will be laid on him if he preached not the gospel. If he taught not the gospel, Paul says judgment will be laid on you. Paul said that he is owing to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, that's the Greeks, and the barbarians. Both to the wise and the unwise. A barbarian was anyone who was not a Greek or who did not speak a Greek language. That was a barbarian. Barbarian were a term used to denote a foreigner. In Revelation chapter 14, Verse 6. I'm going to read something about an angel here. 
to show you how you got to stay in the gospel. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You got to stay in it. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And you're having the everlasting gospel. Gospel of prosperity is not everlasting. The everlasting gospel is death of death, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Angels having the everlasting, everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. The angel had that gospel. And he's going to do that. The same one we should be doing today. Paul says that he's ready to preach the gospel to you then all at Rome. They know they want to kill him, but he still say, I'm ready to preach the gospel. As he has done in other Roman provinces, he said, I'm on my way to preach this gospel. Paul said, I'm on my way. I don't know when I'm going to get there, but when I come, I'm going to preach this gospel. No matter where we go, we should preach the gospel. Not the gospel of prosperity. Prosperity will not bring you salvation. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ that bring you salvation. The gospel of Jesus Christ that brings you salvation, not prosperity. Verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Emphasis, he keeps emphasizing. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said there's one gospel. And that one gospel, he said he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He didn't say another one, another one, another one. He just says one, the gospel of Christ. For it is a power. Only the gospel of Christ. Not prosperity or any other thing. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believe it. If you believe it, that's your power in the salvation. You got to continue to believe it. You can't hit or miss. You got to take it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the Jew first. You got to understand, Jesus said, I came not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was first. But when they rejected him, you would go further in Rome as Paul taught in Rome when he was in the prison. When the Gentiles saw boasting that God had turned to them and turned away from the Jew, Paul said, wait a minute. He's only blind with them for a season. And he's going to return to them. Now is your day of salvation. Well, your day is going to close. Not to the Jew. So we're going to find all of that in the Romans that Paul is talking about. That's how we get to know Paul. And also to the Greeks. The Jew first. Paul said that he is not ashamed. Confounded is what that means. At the gospel of Christ. The gospel of the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Paul is saying that he understood the meaning of preaching Jesus. Do we understand? The meaning of preaching Jesus. If we understood the meaning of preaching Jesus as Paul does, there'd be a lot of stuff we quit doing. We quit acting and entertaining. We just preach the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. He is the resurrection and the life to those that believe on him. He never told a joke. He never said anything funny. 
His words about life everlasting. We talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The same way with Paul and the other brothers. They never told a joke. They continued in the gospel because they were not ashamed in the gospel, and they found they didn't have to say anything funny or attracted to attract people to the gospel. They let the gospel attract people to themselves by the words of life. God's righteousness is revealed. Here we go. God's righteousness is revealed in the gospel on the ground of faith. God's righteousness is revealed in the gospel on the grounds of faith. You find that in Habakkuk, Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 4. Way back then, Habakkuk said, The just shall live by faith as it is written. As it is written. And that was in the Old Testament. The just shall live by faith. And Paul understood. Paul understood that this was embedded in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of life in him. Thank you for listening. Thank you for paying attention. Next week we'll move further. Thank you.